Hello and welcome back to In Your Face. I'm Anthony Capo alongside my hosts Peter Capo and CJ Mass. Our first topic today talks about the recent retirement of power forward, center, whatever you want to call him, Tim Duncan. All right, guys. So, I, Peter, where do we where do we feel he goes down? In all I feel like all time he's somewhere between number four and number seven. Because you have to remember he's the all time leader in blocks and rebounds. And he's one of the best underrated players in the league. He goes by so underrated because he doesn't talk about himself that much. And you see a lot of commercials for other big superstars, but you never see a commercial with him in it. He's one of the most underrated players and that leads in like two categories for defense. So I think he should be ranked somewhere between number four and number eight. CJ, being I'm, underrated is different than being great. How do you feel? I agree with Peter because like he is underrated because he rarely talks and he's very humble. Like LeBron James, we all know he's really good. And he once said, I'm the best player in the world. Like we already knew that, but he didn't have to say it because he's like, you should be humble. But Tim Duncan is definitely in the top one, 10 players of all time. People just don't think of it as much because he's just very underrated. He's one of the prime big men in the league because he's that guy that if you need something done down in the paint, either on offense or defense, Tim Duncan can do it. I definitely admire his character and definitely how you guys said how humble he was. But let's talk about the difference between center and power forward. What do you think about that? Um, they both play the post usually, but sometimes the center is probably bigger sometimes. How do you feel about the statement, he's the greatest power forward ever? I mean, power forward, center, whatever you want to call it, he's, I just say he's one of the greatest big men. Definitely. All right, so our second topic today comes on the rumors or reported trade of Blake Griffin to the Celtics. I don't think that's going to work because uh, the Clippers had really good chemistry and a lot of teams in the NBA are doing this. They're taking away all their good players and leaving it with one star. Kevin Durant went to the Warriors. Now they're left with Russell Westbrook. Serge Ibaka went to the match. They're left with Russell Westbrook. And now the Clippers give away Paul Pierce and supposedly Brett Griffin. And now they just have one star, uh, Chris Paul. And But they also have Josh Reddick, JJ, JJ Reddick was a good three-point shooter, so I think it's either going to be work perfect or not going to work at all. The Clippers are going to have to resolve the small ball now. I think this this trade is going to work out for the Celtics, really, because now they're going to have Blake Griffin and Al Horford. So now, like, now they're going to have a and Isaiah Thomas. So I did, Isaiah Thomas is going to work well with Al um, Horford and Blake Griffin down low in the post. For the Clippers, though, if they get Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce is pretty old, so he's getting like worn out. Well, so but DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul are still there, but they're still missing Blake Griffin, and Blake Griffin was a huge part of their offense, even though he missed most of the year. Exactly, like DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul are great people to develop with, but I don't know if Blake can make the transition to Isaiah Thomas and Al Horford as the other two greats on his uh, team. You have one of the biggest guys in the league and one of the smallest guys in the league on the same team. That can either go really well or really bad. This NBA offseason is definitely been interesting, but we'll see how it turns out next season. Um, for In Your Face, I'm Anthony Capua. I'm Peter Capua. I'm CJ Mass. Thank you. Thank you. And cut.